Now, that was a very modern illusion. I'd like to show you now one of the oldest illusions in magic. It's called the cups and balls. Now, this was done many, many centuries ago, and the magicians always used two or three cups and two or three balls. I simplified it a little bit for you, Edna, and for you, David. I'm only going to use one little copper cup and one green ball. Now, I'm going to explain what's going to happen. Then you can help part and participate, okay? Now, I take the little green ball, and then David, I put it inside the cup, and I shake it up like that, and I take it and put it inside of my pocket. Okay, and you're supposed to guess whether the ball is under the cup or in my pocket. Have you got that? Okay, let's begin. You got, okay, the ball goes right down inside of the cup. I shake it up like this, and I take it, and I put it down inside of my pocket. Now, Edna, do you think the ball is in my pocket or under the cup? Under the cup. Under the cup. Are you sure you don't want to change your mind? Yes, I do. Where do you think now? In your pocket. You have to watch a little closer, Edna, okay? Let's try something a little bit easier now. The ball is going to penetrate right through the handkerchief, leaving no hole. That's what makes it magical. I put the ball right on top of the handkerchief, and we cover it with the cup to make it a little bit more mysterious. Watch, it's going to pass right through. Look, the ball went right down inside of the... Wait a minute. Look, the little ball got scared and went home. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This time, the ball is going to pass into the glass, through the cup, and through the handkerchief. Now, I'm going to take the ball, David, and put it down inside of my pocket, and it's going to pass into the cup either visibly or invisibly. How would you like to see it go? Yes. Invisibly, through the air. Did you see it go? Well, you should have, because look. There it is, right down inside of the glass. Now this time, this time, Edna, I'm going to do the same thing, a little bit faster. It goes down inside of my pocket, and it's going to go invisibly to the cup. Did you see it go? Well, you should have, because look, it's a lemon. But that's not what really amazes me. What floors me is how this onion gets in here. Especially since they don't even fit inside the cup. Thank you. Now you're going to see something truly amazing. During my career as a magician, I've made many things vanish. Beautiful women, tigers, once even a 7,000-pound elephant. But right now, I'm going to perform my greatest vanishing feat of all. In fact, it's called the vanishing feat, because I'm going to make my own two feet vanish. First of all, <laughs> I will make my right foot vanish. You're laughing. Next, I will bring my right foot back and make my left foot vanish. Now is a grand finale. I will make both feet vanish.
Mr. Tony Randall. You've just, you've been amazing me for years. When you played on Broadway in The Magic Show, I came to see you four times. Oh. I must tell you, your, your mastery of the art of illusion is, it's fascinating. It's, it's, it's miraculous. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Of course, I don't believe anything I see. What if I were to prove to you that illusion can become reality by using your own body? <laughs> this body? My mind is too strong for that. Of course, you can do anything you want to do. It's your show, but it's my body, but it's your show. Well, good. Then let me introduce you to one of my very beautiful assistants. Hi there, Carol. Oh. Yeah. Is she going to do something to my body? <laughs> no, Tony, that won't be necessary. Oh, I was just thinking, you know, a fellow can't help that. <laughs> now, Tony, since you're wearing your beautiful black tuxedo, may we have the black cloth, please? Tony, you're going to take this little gray pole with the black apple with the wings on top, right? I'd like you to come over here and just step around. Yes. You have to leave Carol for a second and walk behind the black clock. Now, if you just work here to the far end of the clock, okay? I'll do whatever you ask, Doug, but I should tell you, I don't believe in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny either. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to turn you into either one. I'm just going to wrap you up in this little black cloth, and you can just scoot, 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 scoot. Right over about there. You're comfortable in there, Tony. Perfectly comfortable, Doug. Just as I suspected, nothing has happened. <laughs> Just watch. Carol, you have the white pole. Let's have the, the white cloth right here, and you're wearing a white dress. I'm going to take Carol and bring her right over here, and she's going to walk behind the white cloth. You just scoot down to the end there, too, Carol. You can see the little apple. And we're going to wrap Carol all up mummy fashion in this white cloth. There we go. Good. Roll it up like this. The old mummy illusion here. Okay. Now, are you ready in the black cloth, Tony? Oh, I'm ready, Doug, but I'm not as convinced. Are you ready in the white cloth, Carol? Yes, I am, Doug. Now for the magic. wrapped up in the black cloth, wasn't I? That's right. And Carol was wrapped up in the white cloth. Right again. Carol, we, we've shared a remarkable experience together, haven't we? <laughs> yes. Would you care to discuss it over a bit of bubbly? Oh, I'd love to. Oh. <laughs> I'm becoming a believer. Tony Randall. Whenever I get to New York, I spend a lot of time in the Egyptian rooms of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, researching illusions that come from Egypt, a land where magicians use their magic to inspire people to delve deeper into the mysteries of creation and to initiate people into the beyond. So come with me now inside an Egyptian temple at the time of the pharaohs. going to break all known laws of nature with the illusion of the statue of the pharaohs. Ready?
And now the enchanted silver sphere. The legend goes that all who gaze upon it regain the innocence and wonder of childhood. Will you take this to my dressing room? I want to take it home with me. I just love a little enchantment around the house. <laughs> Don't you find that New York is full of all kinds of enchantment? Oh, absolutely. Where else can a girl get turned into a Dalmatian? <laughs> well, lucky for us, a Dalmatian was able to change his spots, and we got you back. <laughs> well, you know, magic works in two ways. Magic works in hundreds of ways. I'll show you what I mean. Let's stroll over to the Plaza Hotel. <laughs>
I'd like to show you a wonderful new illusion. Oh, great. Which one? Well, I thought this one would be pretty easy. I'm going to take two blades like this and divide you into three pieces. Hmm. Sounds like fun. What do I do? Well, you just get inside of this box and I put the blades right through. I got to get into this box? Yeah. Oh, but Dougie, it's much too small. No, no, it isn't. Look, I'll show you. We're about the same size here. I'll show you. You fit perfectly. You just get in the box and you do up these little stocks on your on your legs and on your hands. You can do this one up. Okay. And you fit right in here like this. Oh. That's all there is to it. Well, that's a cinch. Then what do I do? Well, then I pass my hand in front of your face and put you into a deep hypnotic sleep. Ah, oh, you mean like this? figure out how you did it. My wife, Debbie. One of the reasons I wanted to bring this show to New York was so that I could see all the people I used to work with on Broadway. One of them is a beautiful lady who appeared with me in the magic show a few years ago and is now starring in the Tony Award winning musical Nine. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Anita Morris. to welcome you back to Broadway. Thank now, you. I know you are doing a new magical musical called Merlin. That's right, and I'm very excited about it. I can hardly wait. Well, you should be excited. Now, Doug, you told me tonight that you and I are going to do an illusion with one million dollars. That's right. Well, that I'd like to see. <laughs> You're going to. You know that New York is the money capital of the world. So why don't you and I go down to Wall Street and become financial wizards? Ah. Doug, now I've seen you work wonders with money before. I once saw you borrow a $20 bill from someone in the audience, burn it to ashes, and then restore it. Do you remember? Sure I do, but that was a few years ago. There's been a lot of inflation since then, you know. That's why tonight I'm going to do it with $1 million in cash.